but still like I don't know people are being very judgmental like why don't you why don't you it's like it's crazy and do you get encounters where people go like so are you a boy or are you a girl I don't know it 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 makes me very tense and like you know sometimes I get pissed off so like um that was one of the worst moments in my life Hi guys, it's Sonori here from Office Invasion and today I'm sitting down with Ga Pink on the second episode of Pride and Prejudice. Hey, it's Ga Pink. All right, so today's episode we are talking to Ga Pink about being a non-binary person in a heteronormative world, right? So Ga Pink, when did you realize that you don't fit into the usual heteronormative male role? I think since I was a kid, I I felt like I, I, of course, I felt very different. I used to like certain things where all the other boys doesn't fit into. So, and then I was a 19 born, right? Mm -hmm. 90s born. So, um, I came up with all the technological revolution and stuff, and like, and then I used to like go to all these internet cafes to check on things, certain things, and then I realized that okay, I'm not alone. And I met, but like, it's at that time I didn't find anyone who's non-binary. Mm -hmm. But there were people who cross dress, who did drag and all. But still, I was like uh, looking forward to like you know explore more to like get the things right in my head. And then um, I realized, okay, I'm also in the community and I'm non-binary. So here I am. May I ask you at what age you? Officially came out. If you had the whole official coming out, mm. or if you just admitted it. Official coming out in the sense it's like um, to my colleagues or anything. At um, what point did you openly talk to your friends about, uh, like you know, about yourself, your identity, or maybe the fact that you found? I think uh, when I was doing my A levels. Okay. And how was like your support 16, system then? Seventeen, right? Yeah. Oh, Sixteen. That's early. I think. School was like, I, I, I think my, um, um, where I did my advanced level, um, I, I, I actually got a lot of support from my colleagues, my, uh, like, you know, my teachers and like, you know, the, the vibe was such amazing and I'm, I'm pretty much sad because now it's not, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know the reason behind it, but still, I was really free and like, you know, um, I don't know how to explain it even because um, I wish I could go back to those days, those two, three years. I had the best in my life. Trust me, it's, it's amazing. And I, then my, my best friend was also from that school, the same school. And we're still good friends. Like we are still best friends. That's pretty phenomenal because most of the time, when you hear someone coming out, especially in school, and you went to an all-boys school as well, right? And you're coming out to your friends at that point. A lot of the time you don't hear good stories, good endings to those stories, right? You hear like, oh, sometimes they've lost friends. They didn't have a good support system. Yeah. So it's really good that your friendship has lasted and they really, and your teachers mm -hmm. really supported you throughout. We live in a world where everyone is so used to labels, right? Mm. We like to label us as like obviously when it comes to gender, when it comes to preference, when it comes to even our job description, everyone has a label, right? How is, how is it being in such a world and do you get encounters where people go like, so are you a boy or are you a girl? Yeah, there were situations like that, you know, like um, some, uh, as an example, I'll tell you, um, one time there's this uh, person from my previous workplace um, he asked me like uh, why don't you go through the process I was like what process I mean like uh, you are a transgender right I was like I may be I'm under the transgender umbrella but why did you ask me that question because he was like telling me you will look much more beautiful and like you you, you will look good if you become a transgender, I mean like, I don't want to. No offense, but 
I didn't want to be a transgender because I love my body and I like the way I am. And I have a lot of trans friends as well. That's their life. That's how they feel like inside out, right? So for me, it's like, I, I really like myself. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to like, you know, I, I actually explained him what it is exactly. But still, like, I don't know, people are being very judgmental. Like, why don't you? Why don't you? It's like, it's crazy. Why can't they ask uh, someone who, if they think that this person is different, uh, how are you? Mm -hmm. It's a, just a simple question, right? So, why the f use? Why don't you? And blah, blah, blah. It's because, like I said, we like to label people. And I think a lot of people don't know the difference. There is a difference between trans people and non-binary people. Exactly. Just because you're non-binary doesn't mean you're automatically a transgender person. So there is a massive difference over there. Exactly. And uh, talking about that, do you face discrimination at any point? Yeah, when I was a kid, I did. Like, big time. At school, public. People, there were people who were like, you know, like uh, when I was a kid, uh, all these young, like the same age people, they were like telling me, like, you know, Ganny and like, you know, I, I was like, I actually like don't like people calling someone Ganny because it's a bad word, I believe. Mm. Because I don't know, it, it, it makes me very tense and like, you know, sometimes I get pissed off. So like, um, that was one of the worst moments in my life when I was like waiting until my um, transport van comes. People were, were like, all these young kids were like telling me Ghani and all, and all the people inside the, in the uh, van itself, they were like started laughing at me each and every single day. So what did you do at that point? I don't know. I just screamed them out and that's it. And it happened for like more than two to three years. How did you handle that for more than two days? I didn't f end of the day. I, like, I was like, okay, let them do whatever they want. I'm just gonna be the same person as I am right now. That's it. Thank you. Wow. That's 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 incredible strength, right? First of all, I don't think people should insult anyone based that's the thing. just because they're different. Second of all, Ghani is not an insulting word. Okay. Exactly. Like, why insult anyone with that? And if a person's living your life, not affecting another person. Why insult them? Exactly. Right? Now, going on that spectrum of hate and discrimination, you're an artist. Mm. I've seen your music videos. They are fabulous. Check out Gar Pink on YouTube and Instagram. Um, you, um, you made a lot of music videos tackling it. In fact, you made a mu I saw recently you put an Instagram story, Instagram post about where you're I believe taking back the word and you made because it was a few of y'all in it and it looked fabulous and at the end you had that description and then you had another video talking about how a lot of people struggle loving differently compared to the usual one and all mm. so you're really putting yourself out there and you're putting your message out there mm. and you're a public person how often do you get online hate for that because while you have an outpouring of support I'm sure at some point you must be getting some hate for it too. I'm a very humble person. Each and every single person who sends me a message on Instagram, what I do is like I, I send them, Hey, so and so, how are you? I hope you are doing good in this uh, pandemic time and all. And that's it. But people are like, that's crazy. And the other, uh, the special thing is like, I got a lot of messages from people, like, you know, trans people as well, like, you know, asking help. Mm. Some other like people asking psychological support, mental support, and like you know how to get into the process if you want to, if that person wants to be a trans person. So, and I, I, I really I help them out with certain like you know numbers, certain uh, sharing certain numbers of people and the organizations and all. So, I think it's really good, and I feel happy to help someone like that. Like I mean, like. I don't even know that person, but like he has this uh, faith on me to like you know text me or like send me a send in an Instagram message or like messenger or through messenger or WhatsApp or whatever and like ask him for help because That's you create really a safe space for them. Exactly. Just seeing the message you put online, they feel safe to approach you. Exactly. Right? 
It's really hard to find people who support you in, in a system like this. It's because of their insecurities, not because of us being in the community. Mm. That's a good answer. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, Sri Lanka, we've been progressing a lot when mm. it comes to accepting the LGBTQI community. Probably you might notice a difference between how you were when you were trying to figure things out in the internet cafe and now there's a lot more resources people are a lot more open about it and yet we have we still have people struggling to um, figure out their identity and struggling to come out about it right do you have any words of advice for them wait for the current moment like don't rush into any of the things in your life, even when it comes to a relationship, your job, or whatever. Like there are times that we have to go through, but still keep faith on you, trust yourself, and um, make sure that um, you get into like you know to like find out people who actually like actually supports you. Mm. At least, like I mean, like not to get advices from people or friends but like still like even though you're going through shit the bad time so there will someone that I hope like even if I'm going through something sh bad I normally wish like oh my god my best friend was there so we, can, we could have like you know beer or something and like you know talk about something else and like you know, chill out so you have to gain friends you have to find out like who, who are being real to you so and I respect the thing that people are in the closet because of their own reasons uh, it's not about being their insecurities at all for some point yes but still like even you are in the closet as an example it, and then you see me as a threat that's fucking bad no if, if there are people who do that okay so that's the thing you have to be confident and like you have to be you have to have be happy about like if someone is like doing something at least like you are in the closet and this person is so much visible to like you know True. public and all okay that might might be a threat to yourself in a certain way like you know there are like things like that but still the best thing you have to do is like if you want to like you know come out mm -hmm. you first start to you have to start respecting other people and eventually you have to let people realize about your true self and I don't think other than that you don't have to worry about anything absolutely and there's something you said that uh, stood out you said you respect people who are in the closet and you also said take your time and come out right you they don't have to rush out mm. just because they start questioning something um, do you think that sometimes people feel pressured to come out immediately? Not really. No. You can have your own time to do that. Because we are living in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. and there are certain things that we should follow. But still, some of the things are, have been made from the so-called people. Mm. <laughs> it was not there before, right? And of course, you, you can't be like, you know, like, Tell your mother or like your father, look mom, oh look dad, I'm gay or whatever. Mm. Because we are not living in a European country. Their culture is different. If your parents loves you, no matter what, they will love you, right? They will love you back. So even if you go and murder someone, right? Yeah. So. That's true actually. What you have to do is like, you have to take it very slow and... You know, even my, my parents were like, my father, when my father passed away in 2013, but he was a very, like, you know, cool man. He was like, you know, he was helping me out with all the dresses when I was, used to drag and all, because I used to perform at the studio for, with all this drag makeup oh, and nice. all. Yeah. That's very open and accepting of him, right? Because normally you don't hear such um, yes. stories you hear. Where anyone coming up to their parents, more often than not, you hear that mm -hmm. they have to teach their parents how to exactly. accept them. Yes. So your parents were completely I fine. I think my mother is finding it very difficult to like you know get it, mm -hmm. but still 
she's pretty much cool with it. She has even seen the Post Like a Queen video. What did she say? She likes it. There you she's go. the one who ironed all the clothes. There you the go. The costumes and all. Yeah. <laughs> so, there is something though. Now, with the LGBTQI community, with every sexual identity, there's always been myths behind it, right? Mm. For example, being non-binary, there might be some myths behind it that people assume non-binary people are a certain way, right? For example, y'all could be all non-binary people are polyamorous, so all non-binary people are promiscuous or something like that. What are the biggest myths you've heard about being non-binary that are false? People still have this misunderstanding about us getting into fabulous costumes and dresses and stuff. Oh my god, if you want to be a trans person, go through the process. No way, I like my body. Yeah. Yeah. That's Each and true. every single part of it. So, and uh, when it comes to non binary, like if I explain it to you, non binary is like not exclusively male or female. So, I can be whatever I want if I feel like, hey, Masha, how are you? Whatever, mother. <laughs> so like I'm really comfortable with that when yeah. I'm with my straight friends like if I if I wear it like I'm, I'm gonna go by bus yeah. okay after this if I feel like I want to go to a petty cafe and like drink uh, plain tea and like you know have <laughs> plain tea cake so come on like you know you have to like adjust exactly otherwise you can't survive that voice change was surprising. <laughs> like going from that, this is regular voice to that, that machong voice. <laughs> that's okay. Love it. Okay. All right, that's amazing to hear, Garpin. And you have actually shared a lot with us right now with how people uh, see non binary people, how you, your experiences have been, and your thoughts and beliefs on it as well. And thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, I just have one question to wrap this up with. It's Pride Month, right? Yep. It's a month where we celebrate all things Pride. We celebrate you know, fabulous queens like you and everyone else in the community. What is that one message you want to give to everyone for Pride Month? Believe yourself. And most important thing is you're not alone. And, and the other thing is respect if you respect only you earn respect so it doesn't matter you're in the community or whatever make sure that you respect everyone Garvin, thank you so much it's been a pleasure having you here you have shared so much with us that i find absolutely ins insightful and i hope anyone watching this video even if it's one person watching it and if you resonate with what Garvin says if it changes your life, even if you learn one tiny thing from this video, I, that makes all the difference. Thank you so much. Thank you.